Since 2016, we've been living in a desolate world devoid of new Downton Abbey episodes. While Downton Abbey isn't being revived as a TV series, we are being blessed with a film. Be warned that there are spoilers ahead, so if you're up to date with the show, here's what you can look forward to in the film. There was speculation that Departed cast member Dan Stevens, who played Lady Mary's dearly departed husband Matthew Crawley, might appear as a ghost or in a flashback. Stevens himself fanned the flames by posting a photo on Instagram with his former castmates, with a caption reading, Should Matthew have a mustache for the Downton Abbey movie? He then fanned the flames in November 2018 by appearing with a mustache on The Late Late Show with James Corden. Can you confirm? if you are going to be in the Downton Abbey movie. I, I can neither confirm nor deny well, you can. Uh, the report. <laughs> Alas, Stevens was just messing with everyone, and in February 2019, he officially confirmed that he will not be appearing in the film. Sorry, Matthew fans. Fan favorite Maggie Smith, who played the Dowager Countess, actually wasn't that upset when Downton Abbey ended. She told yours, It's not riotously funny to be in corsets and a wig from 7 o'clock in the morning until 7 o'clock at night. We have had a great time making the show, but to tell you the truth, the corsets are agony. God knows how they lived in the days when they had to wear them all the time. And in a 2017 interview at the British Film Institute, she said she didn't think a movie revival would be a good idea. I just think it's squeezing it dry, do you know what I mean? I don't know what it could possibly be. It's too meandering. In fact, she suggested that the best way to do a movie might be if it were centered on the dowager's death. So are you in a way sort of glad that Downton's over? Oh yeah. By the time we finished, she must have been 110. Don't worry though, Smith seems to have had a change of heart, as she is front and center in the film's trailers. Thank goodness. One fan favorite we won't be seeing in the Downton Abbey film, though, is actress Lily James, who was introduced as the Dowager Countess's great-niece, Lady Rose, in the third season's Christmas special. By the end of the show, Rose had moved to America. That's not why she's missing from the film, though. Downton Abbey creator Julian Fellows told Entertainment Weekly that James was just too busy now that she's become a household name for films like Cinderella and Yesterday. Lily is now a big star, and it would have been incredible incredibly difficult for her to find time in her schedule to come and play essentially a supporting role in Downton when her career was in a different place when she was with us. Executive producer Gareth Neam joked that James couldn't make time because she's in every other film in the world at the moment. The Downton Abbey movie is going to take us into the future, but not too far down the timeline. The film is set in the autumn of 1927, picking up just a year and a half after the series finale. No maid, no valet, no nanny even. It's 1927. We're modern folk. While it might have been interesting to see what Lord and Lady Grantham's grandkids look like when they're all grown up, show creator Julian Fellows told The Wrap that he has a solid reason for not wanting to set things too far in the future. I feel the 30s have been very much explored dramatically, and I didn't really want to get into the whole business of the Nazis, which I think has been explored exhaustively. Fellows added, The difficulty of dramatizing the Nazis to me is that I like ambivalent dramas where you don't know whose side you're on or maybe you change sides. But the Nazis don't give you that. Nobody's slightly on the side of the Nazis. It's so absolute. There's just bad guys and good guys. While the film is starting up not long after we last saw the inhabitants of Downton Abbey, the film could have just as easily been in a completely different era. One of the ideas Julian Fellows had for a Downton Abbey film was actually not a sequel, but a prequel. The advantage to this, of course, is that it would have been easier to cast as they wouldn't have had to try to bring together all the original cast members of the show. At a BAFTA screenwriters lecture in 2012, Fellows said, I do actually have an idea of doing a prequel of the courtship of Robert and Cora when all those American heiresses were arriving in London. They had a slightly troubled courtship because she was in love with him before they married, and as we know, he married her entirely for her money. Fellows added, I sort of feel there's something quite nice in there because he's a decent man and so he feels rather guilty about this, which has affected their marriage beyond that. If you think obsession over the royals began with William and Kate, you're in for a big surprise, because the Downton Abbey film centers on the excitement and drama surrounding a royal visit to everyone's favorite English estate. The king and queen are coming to Downton. 
What? It's not clear which members of the royal family will be swinging by the estate. We'll almost certainly see King George V. We might also catch a glimpse of the currently reigning British monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, who was born in 1926, the year before the movie takes place, but only if there are cousins tagging along for the royal visit. In 1927, Elizabeth was only distantly in line for the throne as her father, George VI, didn't inherit the crown until after the abdication of his older brother. Edward VIII in 1936. Lady Mary and Lady Edith haven't always had the smoothest relationship, which is putting it mildly. But according to Michelle Dockery, who plays Lady Mary, things have changed since the series ended. They're very supportive of one another, and they're good friends. It's nice to see Mary in that way, as opposed to being in constant turmoil about her love life. Dockery told Entertainment Weekly that Mary is finally on top of her game. She's embraced her responsibility much more now as she's matured. As much as Mary is very independent, her loyalty always remains with Downton. There's a sense of Mary holding it all together. And as for Lady Edith, director Michael Ingler told Entertainment Weekly that she is settling into her new life as the happily married Marchioness of Hexham. Edith and her husband are adapting to being a married couple and to her being a lady of one of these great houses. It brings with it much more responsibility and protocol than she was raised with at Downton. On one level, they're these modern people in their training and expectations but then they are in the roles of these very elevated cultural positions. The Downton Abbey series finale did a pretty good job of wrapping up everyone's storylines, but there were two characters who didn't quite get the romantic endings that fans wanted, Thomas Barrow and Tom Branson. Barrow saw a lot of character growth over the course of the show, spending much of the series struggling with his attraction to men, something that was taboo during the time period of the show. Promoted to butler by the end of the series, Barrow had a happy ending, but fans were still left wondering if he would ever get his own Fairy tale romance. That seems to be addressed in the film as the trailer teases that he may finally find romance. But will Branson finally find new love after the tragic death of his beloved wife, Lady Sybil? He will if star Alan Leach has anything to say about it. Leach told Vanity Fair, Look, a romance was one of my hopes that I had at the end of the series, and it didn't happen, so one would hope that it would happen in the movie. Fans are obviously dying for details about the long-awaited film, but the cast and the crew are staying fairly tight-lipped. One thing they've promised, though, is that the film will stay true to the show that we all love, and it's going to be even more epic. Director Michael Ingler told Entertainment Weekly, "...the storyline has expanded the scale of it. It takes the things you love about Downton, the romance, the intrigue, the pageantry, and makes it bigger. That's not much to go on, but Ingler promised that the anticipation will pay off." Making the the film felt very much like the story of the film in that all these people came back together, almost 200 people, to make it bigger and better than ever. The wait for the Downton Abbey film seems like a long one for fans, and the filmmakers are hoping that this will make the film that much more enticing. The executive producer, Gareth Neam, has zero regrets about torturing the show's loyal viewers with such a long gap between the end of the last season and the release of the film, but promises that their patience and devotion will be well rewarded. He told Entertainment Weekly, "...if we'd gone straight into production on the movie, it would have been too quick for everyone involved. It wouldn't have felt special. People are really hungry to be reunited with the characters. Fans might not agree with Neam's definition of too quick, but if the movie is as good as the trailer hints it will be, the wait will be worth it. Fans aren't the only ones who were excited about the Downton Abbey film. The cast was also excited to get back together on set. Elizabeth McGovern, who plays Lady Grantham, told Town & Country, "...it was so nice to see everybody again. I just absolutely loved it. In so many ways, we all went through quite a life-changing experience together, so it really bonds you to a group." McGovern isn't the only one who is thrilled to reunite with the Downton Abbey cast. After the film was officially announced in 2018, Michelle Dockery told Vanity Fair, "...we're all really happy that it's finally happening, and we can answer the question of will the Downton movie really happen, because it's just been killing us to keep it a secret. It's been a while that we've known, so it's nice to finally be saying it, and everyone's so excited to go back." And in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Dockery said that she had always hoped a film would come to fruition. "...I always felt that there was unfinished business because it felt that people weren't quite done with it." 
While the film's director, Michael Ingler, is no stranger to the world of Downton Abbey, he wasn't the first choice to direct the film. It was originally announced that Brian Percival, who has a strong connection to the show, would be helming the project. Percival was involved with Downton Abbey since its inception, directing its pilot episode as well as five other episodes over the first three seasons of the series. Percival was later replaced with Michael Ingler, although no reason for the change was publicly announced. Ingler's history with Downton Abbey doesn't go quite as far back as Percival's, but his involvement with the series is more recent. Ingler directed four episodes of the show over seasons five and six, and also directed The Chaperone, a period film scripted by fellows and starring Downton Abbey Elizabeth McGovern. So he seems like a solid choice. Whoever is behind the camera, though, one thing is sure. We can't wait to see what happens in front of the camera when the film finally arrives in theaters on September 20th, 2019. See you there. A royal luncheon, a parade, and a dinner. I'm going to have to sit down. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.